let us quickly revise the format of uh, cash flow indirect method what is the starting point net profit in some cases this is taken pre tax or after tax but we'll in this case we'll take net profit after tax what was the first adjustment add non cash expense okay so we'll understand why this is done non cash charges then minus what non cash income okay what is next yes add those items which are charged to income statement or pnl but which do not belong to cfo that means we've made a entry in cfo sorry in income statement but those items should not be classified as a part of your income statement or part of your cfo and minus those items which are credited that means which are shown as a profit in your income statement however again the ones which are not a part of your cfo once this is done we get cash flow from operations before working capital changes then we say plus plus minus minus if current liability increases plus if current asset decreases plus if current liability decreases minus and current asset increases plus sorry minus and then what we get so this was cash flow from operations before working capital changes and this is your final cash flow from operations now there's a easier trick to remember this okay the simple trick is and this trick works at multiple places in your syllabus that when it's a liability relationship is direct and when it's an asset the relationship is inverse if you just remember this one single thing you can remember all the four so what is the meaning of liability being direct when current liability increases add when current liability decreases minus when current asset increases minus and when current asset decreases add the relationship for assets was inverse easy will you be able to remember this now okay so let us start doing examples to understand each of these items now from a logical perspective so let's write down example number 1 let us say you have made sales of 100 the only expense in this year was depreciation which was 20 how much is your profit profit is 80 from this profit if you want to derive the cash flow and cash flow what do you think should be how much 100 because this depreciation we've never paid in cash so from 80 if i want to derive this 100 what do i need to do add the non cash charges which in this case happens to be depreciation so it gives us 100 clear so this was your explanation for point number 1 that why do we need to add those non cash charges okay let's do second example now let's say your sales is 100 plus this year you have a profit from revaluation of assets profit from revaluation of assets okay so you will understand this concept later on that in what cases we are required to revalue the asset but just imagine a simple scenario that some asset on your balance sheet currently is being reflected at 100 for some reason accounting standards allow you to show at at 120 and the difference of 20 is to be shown as income so your total profit is how much 120 but this is profit from revaluation of asset you haven't received cash on account of it you just saying that my own asset which was earlier 100 has become 120 there is no cash coming in so how do we get your cash flow statement start with profit of 20 and now this time say non cash income non cash income 20 and then again you are left with 100 easy any questions here okay let's go at then example number 3 let us say sales is 100 
less interest paid इसके ऊपर आप ना आई एफ आर एस एग्जाम्पल लिख लेना ओके यूड अंडरस्टैंड वाई लेटर ऑन सो दिस इज एज पर आई एफ आर एस इंटरेस्ट पेड इज थर्टी एंड देन सेवेंटी इज योर प्रॉफिट ओके नाउ इन आई एफ आर एस इंटरेस्ट पेड दे गिव यू चॉइस यू कैन ईदर ट्रीट दैट एज सी एफ ओ और यू ट्रीट दिस एज सी एफ एफ Either CFO or you treat this as CFF. Okay, so let's assume a scenario where we have decided to treat this as CFF, which means interest paid is not a cash flow from operations at all for this example. But we have reduced that here, right? So what do we need to do? We start with profit of seventy, and then we will say add items which have been expensed to income statement, but which do not belong to CFO. the third item in your pro forma the items which have been charged to pndl or which has been expensed to pndl but the ones which do not belong to cfo so that item here is 30 and again you are left with cash flow from operations of 100 should i repeat this example again yes no see your sales is 100 interest paid is 30 profit is 70 ideally what should happen Cash flow from operation should be hundred, and cash flow from financing should be negative thirty, so that you are left with a cash flow of seventy. So I want to derive this hundred starting from profit. So I start with seventy, but because we have reduced this thirty, we simply add it back, saying that items which have been charged to your income statement as an expense, but the ones which do not belong to CFO, add thirty, and then you are left with cash flow of hundred. Are we clear? Yes, no. Okay. Next example. Example four. Are you finding this too basic? No. Yes. Next example. Sales. One hundred. Let's say you also have income from. dividend received again say this is ifrs example okay because there is the things are a bit tricky in us gap so give heading ifrs example so we can yeah income from dividend received let's say is 30 so now we have 130 now ifrs allows you to treat this as cf O or CFI. So let's assume a scenario. We have decided to treat this as CFI, which means my cash flow from operations should be hundred, my cash flow from investment should be thirty, and a total cash flow should be one thirty. So from this one thirty, we have to derive this hundred. So we start with profit of one thirty, and then we say less those items which have been added to income statement but do not belong to CFO. The fourth item in your pro forma, the items which has been added to income statement but do not belong to CFO minus thirty, and then you have a cash flow from operations of hundred. Are we okay here? Should we go ahead? Hmm? Example number five. Let us say your sales was hundred. your expenses let's let's call them as salary expenses 60 and your profit was 40 however out of the salary expenses 20 is still outstanding that means amount paid in cash is how much only 40 so your cash flow should be how much Sales we have received entire hundred, and in cash we paid how much? Only forty. So cash flow ideally should be sixty. How can we derive this sixty from a profit of forty? So we start with profit of forty, 
and the fact that I have not paid this salary of 20, will I have a liability on the balance sheet? Yes. We will have outstanding salary as a liability of how much? 20. So it is quite possible that last year itself I had a liability of 100. This year liability will become how much? 120. So we do not worry about what is the amount on the balance sheet. We worry about by how much it has increased. So from 0, if it increases to 20, there is an increase of 20. So we will say add increase in current liability. The first number after your working capital changes cash flow. So increase in current liability 20 and then we are left with 60. Is it clear? Please ask. Are you understanding why we have that format? Okay, let's next example then. 60, correct. But we paid only 40 in cash. So cash will reduce by 40 on the balance sheet. Where will that remaining 20 go? It will become a liability. Yes, so it would become an outstanding liability as a current liability. Which means if I know that my current liability increased by 20, that means I have not paid in cash. That means I have to add back. That why, that's why increase in current liability add. Okay, next. Let us see your sales is 100. Your expenses are 50. Your profit is now 50. Okay. This is in cash, this is in cash. But at the beginning of your year, so opening balance sheet, you had accounts receivable of 70. Closing balance sheet, you have accounts receivable of 40. Okay, try to understand. You have made sales of 100, expense of 50, profit is 50. However, last year, at the beginning of the year, this year at the beginning, you were supposed to receive 50, 70 from your debtors. On account of which sales? Sales made in the previous years. But by the end of the year, that amount seems to be only 40. What does it mean? Where did that 30 go? We received in cash. But when I received in cash on account of previous years, does it go to my income statement? No, it does not. But is that my CFO? Yes. So I will start with profit. Profit of 50. And then I will say add decrease in current assets. Can you see that's the second line item after cash flow from operations before working capital. So this is a decrease of 30 and that would give us a cash flow from operations of 80. That's why when current assets decrease at please ask any questions simply amount received from accounts receivable 30. Any questions? Should we go ahead? Next item. Sales 100. Expenses, manufacturing expenses 30. We are left with profit of 70. At the beginning of the year, accounts payable were 60. However, by the end of the year, the accounts payable had become only 20. Why did my accounts payable reduce? Because we paid cash, but this accounts payable was coming on my balance sheet because of certain actions I did last year. So when I pay 40 this year, does it come on to my income statement? It does not. But that is a still a cash flow from operations. So what do we do here? We say profit 70. But it's a minus decrease in current liability 40. And that's how we left with cash flow from operations of 30. Are we okay here? And now the last example. What is the example number? I lost the track. Okay. So example number 8 now. Sales 100. 
एक्सपेंसेस फोर्टी फाइव प्रॉफिट फिफ्टी फाइव your opening accounts receivable were 90 closing accounts receivable were 110 now the question is why are my accounts receivable increasing by 20 yes there are two possibilities number 1 out of that 100 20 is credit sales 20 is credit sales that means i have received 18 in cash or entire 100 was credit sales but i have received 80 so far by the end of the year 20 is yet to be received in both the cases the uh, treatment is same are you following the difference though the first possibility is out of 100 only 20 was credit sales and that's why from 90 it became 110 or entire 100 was credit sales However, 80 were paid to me, and that's why only 20 is yet to be received. Okay, in either case, how do we treat for this? We will start with profit 55, and then we will say less increase in accounts receivable, which is increase in your current assets, the last item in your pro forma 20, which gives us 35. Should I repeat any part? Web of Clear? Should we go ahead then? We don't have to worry. Accounts receivable has decreased, which means I have received whatever I have sold this year, plus I have also received something from the last year. So we we don't worry about whether it was cash sales or credit sales. What we worry about is how much is the cash received from the customers. That's it. ठीक है, so see cash sales and credit sales in a way technically same. So, for example, let's say if I make cash sales of hundred, okay, so customer takes the good and gives me cash, or I make credit sales of hundred in the morning and customer comes and pays me in the evening. At the end of the day, accounts receivable didn't increase, right? And as long as accounts receivable is not increasing, we have received cash from the customer. Is it clear?